taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the... Hey, Tasties, welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds! Uh, quickly, Joey Rose's San Janeiro Festival is going on. Yeah. The feast or the fe- San Janeiro feast? San Janeiro festival? Fe- festival. I know it is feast. I keep calling it the fest. It's feast. Feast, right? Yeah. These are t-shirts we're selling. I saw them online and I was like, well, clearly you're definitely going to bring one in for me. I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll bring you. I'll get you guys t-shirts. <laughs> what's, so the, uh, what's the tag on that? So if this it's a was, kill, Dan, keep it. This was a collab with Friends from New York. I love it. Friends from New York are awesome. It's my friend Heidi's thing. Uh, she throws all these events and parties and stuff in New York. And they're awesome. I, I haven't actually invited you once or twice to when I was going. Okay. She's like, it'll be like, she'll do a thing and it's like, Stretch Armstrong is DJ. I love it. I met Mike D at one of her parties. Really cool. By the way, BC Boys Square, Square is it's the, like the two corner. Of it. crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> and then they were there like, giving a thank yeah. you speech, and I was like, man, I could have been there. Like the t- like the BC Boys have escaped me my whole life. Mm-hmm. I've been I've orbited them and I've seen them and everything, but and I know of somebody who knows somebody, but like I've never met them. They're on a very 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 short list of people that I would. Really want to meet and probably be a little nervous to meet. He was, I have a video somewhere. Paul was with me and took a video of me meeting him, like from across the room, because I was like all excited when I saw him. Mike D. No, Mike D. Yeah. It was at Pier 17 or whatever, the outdoor. Yeah. Like two summers ago. And like I saw him and I was like, dude, that's Mike D. And I was like, I got, I got to, I got to, I got to meet him. I got to say hi. He was just hanging by the DJ booth, like just. Yeah. Like just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Like just like nodding <laughs> his head. And I went over and I was just like, I'm so sorry. So there's a video of me. You can't hear anything. You led I'm with, saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I go, I'm so sorry to bother you. Don't be that guy, you know? bro. Yeah. And I go, dude. <laughs> I'm so sorry to bother you, but I'm going to. Yeah. I go, yeah. I, I, you know, I was like, I, I don't know what else to say to you, dude, but I can't even begin to tell you how much of a part of my life you are. And, and I was like, you're a legend, dude. I just had to shake your hand. And he was he was really, he smiled, like, he, very genuinely smiled. He even said I had to shake your hand. I would have been like, you yeah. don't have to shake my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. was, and it was amidst COVID, I think. It was like oh, summer. Joe. It was the summer <laughs> after terrible. the, it was like when they let us out. <laughs> it was like that summer. Dude, why didn't I, then why didn't I know this when it happened? You're keeping. Or maybe it was the following summer. But, but it, it was doesn't matter. It's like in recent in memory. between lockdowns, you were allowed outside. It's in outside. recent memory. You wouldn't yeah. relay that to me that you met Mike D? I probably did relay it to you. I don't think you did. <laughs> I also have Mike D designed a wallpaper uh-huh. with a company, and um, that wallpaper is in the my stairwell of my home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. That I forgot Brooklyn about that. Brooklyn-centric that's wallpaper. Cool. Um, the, um, but anyway, so this this T-shirt we, we made with friends from New York uh, as a collab for the feast – the back, I don't know if you can see it. But Friends the, feasting from New York. Yeah, so so we, both both uh, crews are repped on either side. Joey Rose is on the front, Friends oh, of New awesome. York on the back, so, and Feast on the back. But what is the tag, please? What do we, what's the tag on the inside of that shirt? I need to know what the tag says on the inside the of that material? shirt. material? No, well, sure. I don't understand what you're saying. The brand and the material, please. Oh, I, I tore it out. I don't know. Why? Why do you? Why do you ask? You have no idea what it was. I could get you that information. Well, I just because there's certain shirts I re, I refuse to wear. They just don't know what they do in the. Brand. It's a it's a nice little shirt. It's a quality shirt. I find. <laughs> you know, it'll I. What? Stand up, stand up. Just put it, pull it down. Let me just see how it fits. What size is that? Large. What? Okay. Is, what is this? <laughs> I don't like it. Why? Can I you not say you don't like it as I'm trying to sell the shirt? I, no, I love the shirt. The shirt's amazing. Yeah. For me, for my body, for my type, Okay. I don't like it. I have an experience with t-shirts. I you, have a thousand you t-shirts. You wear a blend tee. I see what you wear. You Bl- like a t-shirt. Blend t- or no blend. I don't care if it's not, not a blend. I just need to know that that company understands how to cut a garment and sew it. I like this shirt for the, 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 the quality of the shirt I like because this is the kind of a uh, black tea yeah. that will age well. age well. I like a chunkier black tea because yeah. as you wash it, it starts to get that fade or whatever. I don't I like a sure. blend tea that much because 
It looks it looks brand new for all time until the day it literally just falls apart. I actually fully agree with you, but the thing I don't like about not that it's that that type of tea, but like I just don't love a big boxy cut with a wide neck. I'm not saying that's what you have. Right. I'm just saying I hope that it's not that when I try it on because I've gotten teas that I I I would want to marry them. That's how much I like what's maybe, on them, and then I don't wear them because maybe instead I'm of fearing at, the worst with your dear friend slash partner. Slash love, let's yeah. be honest. Uh, t-shirt, you hope for the best. Yeah, and that's something I'm working on. Because okay. I, <laughs> I, I, I fear the worst in every aspect of my entire life. I you know what my on. therapist told me last week? And it blew my mind, or as you would say, balls off. Yeah. That's how you say it. I was talking about all this with him, and I said, why? I, I go, and dude, I swear to God, like a light switch. He said this, and immediately everything shifted. I'm excited. I go, everything on paper in my life is good, and all I can do is focus on what the problem is. Meaning. No meaning. Those words came out of my, my mouth last yeah, night to my yeah. lady. And I said to him, and I said, I said, there's no situation in my life that I'm in where I'm not the ultimate person in it. Like. I, there, I don't have any situation where I can turn to the uh, to another guy above me and go, well, that's his problem. Sure. You know, I'm only, I'm like, every business, everything I'm involved in, it's a, it's my own it's thing. Double edged sword, but which yeah. I'm lucky about. Sure. But sometimes you're like, I really wish there was a supervisor that had to deal sure. with this, right? So, and I said, and the anxiety, and I said, even with like trying to purchase a home, I'm not married. I'm doing it all by myself. Everything has to be taken on and absorbed by me, even though in some scenarios like this, when I have a partner where we both have to take it on, but still, you're still, best case scenario, shoulder to shoulder with the other guy that also has to take it on, I, I right? I what you're saying. And he said... I have never heard it phrased this way. I was like, holy shit. He goes, I can't wait to hear what Bon Mott you're about to drop. He goes, you need to start accepting the chore of seeing what is good in all you have. That he is the challenge. Chore. Yeah, he goes, because it is a challenge and it is very hard to do. It's real easy to just focus on the bad stuff and crumble and be anxious, or whatever. He goes, take on the chore of what is positive and recognizing that. And I was like, holy shit. Like, it just immediately, like, light bulb went off. Oh, it's work. I have to see it as work. Isn't the perspective amazing? It's crazy. I watched, uh, have you seen Stutz yet on Netflix? I started watching it. Uh, you know what I didn't like? Where the reason I didn't finish it? I, I shouldn't say I didn't like it. Well, I didn't finish it. I felt like it was, at least in the beginning, and maybe I should have sat it out. I felt like it was way more about Jonah Hill than it was about the guy. And I was like, I don't understand why I'm watching Jonah Hill speak on camera. Look, that's, well, I'll tell, let me tell and you. I get that he can sell it because he's a big name, well, but well, well, let me tell you, let me yeah. tell you. So I, I, I started to watch it a, a bit back, and I just watched a little bit of it, and I, and I got a sense of it, but I didn't finish it either. Something kept telling me to go back to it because it was intriguing, but for whatever reason, just like anything else, I'm busy, and I if something doesn't hook me, hook me. So I went back to it the other day. It's tremendous. It is absolutely tremendous. So much so, I'm not even joking around with you. So much. So it, it. First of all, the guy Phil Stutz is his his uh, psychologist, psychiatrist. Yeah. I always mix up the two. Um, he's he's been in, in this business a long time, and he's unique and unorthodox in the way that he approaches this kind of thing. And it's all about perspective. Like he doesn't say anything throughout this doc that I've never heard before, or the sentiment of it, or the idea of it. But the way that he frames these things just like that, is completely new to anything I've heard before. And with my brain, the way it works, he makes it like something actionable and something that you have to work, like, it, it's hard to explain, but what you just said, how he, it, that happened like 20 times in this. And he broke down his stuff into like a method and he made his own method and he has like, you know, he calls this thing this and this thing this and he tells you like, what to work on and how to work on it and why. And he gives you these things called tools. Wherein as when you're in a moment at a crossroads with something that we normally have a lot of issues with, he gives you these ways, these exercises to do in that exact moment 
to handle the situation and to to move forward from it. And none of it's like BS. It's all it, it was all like really, really. I absorb and I watched it, and I was like, G- I, halfway through, I was like, I should be taking notes. I really should because I want to take everything away that he's saying. And it was a lot. Um, he later says, "I've only imparted ten percent of what I teach in this doc, but I've decided that." Just like therapy, like literally, like it's about for an hour and a half. At least once a week, I'm gonna watch at least 45 minutes. I'm gonna wa- I'm gonna keep watching it. I want to like start yeah. to absorb, the, well, absorb it that way. And because because also there, as he's doing it, I'm thinking of things that I would be in there saw talking about and saying and applying it to myself. And I'm like, oh wow. And I'm like, you know what, dude? This was more. I've seen some therapists for six months and watching that for 90 minutes was more helpful. I'll go back to it. I'll go back to it. The, uh, I'll go back to it because that's the you know, what you just said, perspective also too, like wording, phrasing, Uh, there's, there's such wisdom in simplicity, you know, and people, we, we, we forget that. That's why there's like children's books. Like I just bought, I, I, cause I saw a clip of a guy he, he, he was like a, I think he was like a, a, a real piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. It was on Instagram. The, the guy was guy. like a fighter or something. Yeah. I don't know. He was, you know, he might have been a, an agent, a real estate. I don't remember what the guy sure. did. But he was quoting this children's book that's called like the the boy the the boy the mule the horse and the something. I I bought it. I bought the book because the quote. I was like, holy shit! I bought the book and I read it. And it's a children's book, basically. I mean, the the the, be- the forward says it's not meant just for children; it's meant for everybody. But it's very much designed, you, yeah, yeah. like in the way, like the Giving Tree or something like sure. that is. But there's a great line in it where they talk about a man. Somebody asks a man, "Is the glass ha- is your glass half empty or half full?" And he says, "I'm not sure. I'm just appreciative that I have a glass." And I'm like, "That's so simple." And it like rocked me. There's a Woody Allen movie where like he- a hurricane. Like a hurricane. There's a Woody Allen movie where he says, he tells a joke. Oh, he does a joke. A doc, guy goes to the doctor and says, it hurts when I do this. Doctor says, then don't do it. He goes, there's great wisdom in jokes. There's more insight into most jokes than there is from the world's greatest philosophers. And again, it's simplicity. It's like that goofy joke, it boils down a truth of life, which is like, if something is hurting you, stop doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's such a duh moment. But like somebody says it to you like that, that directly you go, oh, yeah, Yeah. you're right. And in it, like he he asks Jonah questions. Jonah's really interviewing him to put out his methods to the world because it helped him. And Jonah keeps pushing back and go, I'm not going to talk about that because it's about you, not me. And I don't want to do that. It happens again, happens again. And then the the Stutz is like, just like, well, you know what? Like, I really would appreciate it if you did because... By you doing that will allow me to open up and and get further in this. Like he keeps pushing him to do it, and then finally, like there's a really interesting thing that happens halfway through, where I don't want to give it away, but like kind of Jonah comes clean about something, and like in in relation to them filming, and like completely like resets everything, and it was really cool. And and then Jonah starts to speak, and honestly, it it doesn't feel like it's all about him. It actually just feels okay, like you're watching saying, this, yeah. and it also what Jonah is. You know, going through is extremely relatable. Right. So it's not even like, you know, you can, it's not like you're listening to his problems per se. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. And, uh, well, well, we were talking before. By the way, you can get these shirts. Yeah. By the time this airs, the San Jan Nair is, is over. So where can we get them, baby? But as of this recording, we won weekend. One first week was a great success. Man, yeah. great time. Thank you to Gelso and Grant for, for having us do the pop-up. Uh, but you can get these at Joey Rose's. Uh, you know, we did a limited run. So whatever's left is available at Joey Rose's. And, Pimp, if you could put the link, there's going to be a website you can get them from, too. And you set yourself aside an XL for me, and I'll give you the money for it. I'm happy to support. XL? Yeah. Really? No? Wow. No. Uh, why? No Optimistic. Good? Oh, no, I'm an XL. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You had a nice conversation about therapy and perspective. <laughs> From my perspective, you're not an XL. <laughs> I am now. I'm just kidding. You look great. You've, you've, you've been losing Don't some. Don't go back on I'm man. very serious. You've, you've, Don't you've go been back. doing something. What are yeah, you doing? I'm down 33 pounds. Yeah, what are over, you? Over the course of, since my, since my uh, heaviest. What are you doing? Uh, like a year ago. What have you been I'm doing? Just, just eating better. 
Yeah. No exercise, just food? Not just yet, but I am about to start exercising. But no, just food. Yeah. And I got you, a, I got a long way to go, to be honest. I, I'd love I'd love to lose at least another thirty before I film the special. Are you going ke- like keto or are you no. just just you're not you're just like, no, I'm just not eating like an idiot. Less eating better. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. So no, I have a lot of long ways to go, but I'll just say this real quick because you didn't hear this, but I would like to say it within the app, um, the, the tickets for my special, they went on sale mm-hmm. last week. That's December 2nd at the Vic in Chicago. Everyone supported me tremendously and pretty much they sold out. Great. Um, right, right away. So what we're doing is we're adding Congrats. one more night only the day before Friday, December 1st. We're adding two more shows. I'm not adding any more after that. Um, the tickets have only been on sale a few days and they already sold out. So we're going to try to sell these other ones out. And I'm going to try to do four shows over two nights. So That's they're great. on sale right now. When this comes out, SavileCanoComedy.com. And just one other quick thing is, just because people will ask, it doesn't matter what show you're at or what ticket you have. I'm choosing one person that is in attendance at these four shows. And I'm going to fly them into New York, put them up in a hotel, and bring them on the set of Impractical Jokers. So all you got to do is buy a ticket and be there. You and a plus one will get that. That's still up for grabs on the new night. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys just just so so much. I was shocked. It's that fantastic. Sold out. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. But the, um, uh, congrats. Thanks, baby. Thank you. And uh, again, I'm hoping to get there for the night of the second. Oh yeah, you did mention that, but we didn't get into it. Yeah, well, let's get into it off camera. But yeah, I'm hoping to make that happen. Oh well, you let me know. That'd be amazing. Of course, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm already going to be on the road, so it's just a matter of okay. routing if it makes sense. You know, unless uh-huh. it's batshit to get from one, pl- you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, um, we. Um, Guys, we used to have a partner named Ray Khan that we haven't seen in a bit, and it's back, and we are super, super excited, okay? It's the time of the year where stuff's changing, the vibe is changing, we're getting cozy, holidays are coming up, and it's Ray Khan's anniversary. That's the holiday I'm talking about. Oh, you thought I meant like the fall holidays? No. You're thinking, do you mean Halloween? Uh Uh-uh, I told you. Let me ask you this. Does Halloween also give you 20 to 40% off premium electronics? No, they don't. And listen up, because Raycon's celebrating their anniversary, and you don't want to miss this sale. You might have heard us mention Raycon's sale before. They're turning six. They've really made a name for themselves in the premium audio space. As a matter of fact, that's my reminder to buy a bunch of stuff from Raycon. Um, This past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. So needless to say, there is a lot to celebrate, okay? Everyday earbuds are known for delivering high-quality audio and thoughtful features like 32-hour battery, 32 hour battery life and perfect in-ear fit for all-day wear and comfort. Uh, all this at half the price of other premium brands. So they have that, but they've expanded to so much more, and they have over 78,000 five-star reviews. You don't want to miss out on an anniversary sale. What are you going to do? You're not going to wait till the 7, right? Get in on it now. Celebrate Raycon turning 6 with their biggest sale of the year going on right now. Hurry now to buyraycon.com slash taste buds and use code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site-wide, okay? That's code birthday at buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash taste buds to score 20 to 40% off buyraycon.com slash taste buds. I got to tell you something. I was going to go see Billy Joel's residency at the Garden for the fourth time, and I've usually uh, ordered the t- my tickets six months in advance. But uh, at the last minute, a buddy of mine, I realized, had never seen him when we were going to go, and I was like, you know what? I got the Game Time app. This will be perfect. I went online the night before, and I bought uh, Billy Joel tickets at Madison Square Garden on the Game Time app, and I even got to send him a picture of where we were sitting because they show you exactly where you are. It takes two clicks to do this thing and it gets sent right to your phone so when we went i wasn't like online at the garden like shuffling through emails looking for some type of barcode uh i really like game time uh it's an app that gives you the best prices for last minute tickets guaranteed and it's not just music it's sports it's uh comedy hello it's broadway hello it's movies hello all that kind of stuff Last minute tickets, they got flash deals, they got zone deals, and their lowest price guarantee, which is pretty cool because basically what happens is if you find the same sec- uh, tickets in a section and row, the same section row for less, game time will credit you that 110% of the difference. Uh, all your price totals are shown up front so you know what you're getting. There are no hidden fees. Uh, I really like Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the code TasteBuds for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code TasteBuds. T A S T E B U D S for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
Folks, Joe DeRosa here. I got some live dates coming up I'd like to tell you about. Why not? Uh, I'm doing a special show on November 9th at the KGB Bar in New York City as part of the New York Comedy Festival. The show is called Selected Readings, where I'm going to be reading excerpts from my audio book, The Penthouse Papers, released on uh, a special thing, Records. And I'm also going to be reading some other stuff I've had published over the years. I'm looking forward to that. Then I'm hitting the big open road getting out of my own town where I live, and I'm coming to you with what? I never promised you a rose garden. Live, the new hour, very proud of this show. November 11th, hitting Philadelphia, PA, Theater of the Living Arts. November 17th, Pittsburgh, PA, at Bottle Rocket Social Hall. November 18th, Buffalo, New York, Theater at Seneca One. The 30th of November, Denver, Colorado, at the Summit. December 1st, Phoenix, Arizona, at the Crescent Ballroom. And December 3rd, Salt Lake City, Utah, at the Soundwell, Folks, we're adding dates all the time, but for these dates and ones we might add later, you can go to joederosa.com for ticket links and show information. And of course, if you are in New York City and you want to check out my establishment, Joey Roses, come on down. We're open seven days a week, 11.30 a.m. Every day we open those doors for affordable booze and delicious affordable sandwiches, joeyrosesnyc.com. What's up, guys? Real quick, tour dates are on sale right now at SalVolcanoComedy.com. Uh, there's tons of cities up there. Tomorrow night, if you're watching this right now on Hey Babe, tomorrow night I am in Bro Bowling Green, Kentucky on Friday, Cincinnati on Saturday, and Toledo on Sunday. There's still some tickets available, so get those. Uh, following that, we're going to be in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and Wilmington, Delaware. Then we're doing Macon, Savannah, and Athens, Georgia, and so on and so forth. There's a big Illinois run in November leading up to my comedy special at the Vic in Chicago on December 1st and 2nd. The second sold out, as you guys, I hopefully know, uh, and so we added two shows on the first. All will be taped, and all, if you have a ticket to all, any of those shows, you'll be eligible to win uh, a flight, hotel, and trip to the set of Impractical Jokers. I'm choosing one ticket out of those four shows. Uh, December 1st is still on sale right now, but it's going fast. SalVolcanoComedy.com. Hope to see you guys on the road. Oh, and I did the first show of my tour. Saturday. In Avenel. Avenel, New Jersey. Yeah. Packed house. I can't thank Avenel Performing Arts Center and the audience that came out to that thing enough. It was such an amazing way to start. It was so killer. It was me? so killer. I recorded that just... Caitlin Reese, who's really funny and a good friend, she was she opens for me a lot. She was there. She, 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 I just had it recorded on my iPhone, on her iPhone, so I could just but encouraging, look at yeah, it. encouraging. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm gonna the, this run now that I'm doing of this hour is now the the this is the honing of okay, this is gonna end up being how I shoot it. Okay. Uh, but my, it was amazing. It was one of the best awesome. times I've ever had doing this hour. It was such a way to kick the tour off. The crowd was. Oh, they were amazing. A lot well, of got good news going on. Pimpy, everybody got good yeah. news. Yeah. Good vibes today, man. Yeah, Pimp, do you want to, you know? Okay, got it, No, got but it. I'm just, I didn't think, I was just saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Good, good but taste, taste Buds was in effect, obviously. And uh, it's funny, man, because there's a part in the show now where I say, I talk about getting trolled. And, uh, you know, I tell a bunch of stories of getting trolled. And I, and I started by saying, I go, guys, I've been doing comedy for 23 years. I've pissed off a lot of people. I don't know what it is. It's something about my face. People just don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, uh, and I, I say to the crowd sometimes, I'm like... When yeah, I met Pimp, I, he didn't like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I say to the crowd, I go, I know there's a lot of Taste Buds fans here. I go, I saw what you said about me in the beginning <laughs> <laughs> why isn't it cute i always told you you'll win why, him over yeah why is he with this guy now you want to write to me and go you know i hated your guts now i like you as if that's a compliment <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it got that got a huge pop i was really happy that they thought that was funny but anyway it was By just way, i don't think i realized that the people you're getting over there are going uh lukewarm on me and coming to going over to you <laughs> i noticed that too i know it's real <laughs> It's always a price to pay. Nothing can just ever be easy. Good stuff, man. Okay, good. But we were talking, speaking of perspective, so we had a, we, you were telling me, a, we had a fire. At jo Everybody's fine. It was a small fire, but we did have a fire at Joey Rose's. We had to stay closed yesterday to deal with it. Uh, we're back open today, so, it, 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 you know, but but so, there's still, there's still it, it was a fire. Fire is any way you what, slice it. But what it. caught on fire? 
I don't have all the full details. I know we had people there looking into it and insurance and all that stuff but like, was there today. Is it a curtain, a wall, a sandwich? No, what I, went on I, 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 I believe, no, 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 there was a, there was a wall area where I, I saw pictures of what, where damage occurred or whatever. And no, no curtains. Called. Malfunction or malfeasance? I'm, I, I'm waiting to get the final. You know Did what? You I don't want to. Sp- I don't want to speculate, but I'm. I'm waiting to get the final. But yeah, obviously it was something went wrong. Okay. You know, and and we're trying to figure out exactly how it was caused. But yesterday, that was one of the things you have to do is you have to shut. We shut the bar down. Turn the electricity off. Shut it down, to, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Shut, shut it down, shut down Mike. We had, so anyway, everybody's okay. But <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! You're just, like, you're just like, what else is gonna? Ha- I was just in the room. For those of you at home, Pimp and Sal, guys, the business is on fire right now. We did, yeah. <laughs> We did all our ads. Sal- you should have done a promo right in front of the fire real quick. Like, just turn on a selfie. I'm like, guys, Joey Rose is on fire. Get it's hot, 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 hot. <laughs> yeah, it's playing Buster Poindexter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was in the other room. Sal and Pimp did all the ads without me because I was on the phone. And I came back in and they were like, you guys were all like, we're so sorry, dude. Is everything okay with the fire? I'm like, oh, that had nothing to do with the fire. That was another whole thing. That is in another part of my life. That's also a problem. <laughs> it just never stopped. And you were like, I can relate. And then you started to tell me a story and I said, save it for the air, please. Okay. Your bar, when you had a bar, <laughs> yeah. what happened? A, va- a literal van drove through it <laughs> while we were open. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't laugh. Was anybody hurt? Yeah. Oh, but, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. But, I'm not but, laughing I, at that. I, I don't think there was no serious injuries. Okay. But okay. they went flying. The, <laughs> the van came through, literally through the front wall and hit like the front, like two boots that were on the wall and people were in those boots and they just like, I think somebody ran and jumped and then the other guys just got thrown across the room and the van went all the way in. I, by the way, that's the that was my second job that a van drove through the wall. And I also worked at a convenience store in high in high school and a little bit of college. And a, a parked car just drove right through to like through five aisles, just hit hit so the, the gas. Were they drunk? Jumped? No, they were in park. I guess hit the gas that they were reversing. Just went went forward, broke through brick glass, drove through four or five aisles. Both times we have on a security camera on both places. Who reverses at that velocity? No, they went forward. <laughs> no, I'm saying that I they know. were jumping I forward, know. thinking they were reverse with enough speed to crash them. It's like, you know who's what? hitting reverse You know that what I think hard? happened? You ever see That's that phenomenon? Crazy. This is my favorite fail yeah. online. It's a motorcycle fail when people get on and they, they try to... They go and it goes underneath them because they go like that and they don't realize how fast it's going yeah. and then their instinct goes like that and it just goes and they just go out of control and it, you know what I, mean? I think that they were probably looking behind them and then they went to go push reverse and when it went forward they were like kind of thrown and this is me speculating <laughs> uh, and well, then they went through. I had a when I lived in L.A. I bought a, a an electric uh, like a rechargeable scooter because <laughs> I didn't realize I this is a true story. I, I would love to see you whipping down the street in a scooter, dude. I loved it. I love to see it. So I That's when you drank your rosé, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Big rosé days. Just like Scooter rosé. Yeah. The, uh, helmet or no helmet? Always helmet. Oh. Yeah. Oh, even more I want to see it. <laughs> just like I could picture full you. Full motorcycle, like full. <laughs> I just picture you like a me- one of those mesh backpacks with like two bottles of rosé in it, like a full helmet, just speeding down the street. Maybe a little basket. Like yelling at people like, get away. Big. I uh, no, I <laughs> bought it because my license expired. You probably tried to do tricks every once in a while. I didn't realize my license was going to expire, and I remember I was in. Um, you wait, you mean your license for for driving? So you got you. So you had no license. Dude, I was a- in Portland, Oregon, doing shows. I was flying back from Portland, literally on my birthday, and I looked and realized my license was expiring. That was the last day of my license, and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. I never looked because I still had my New York license. So whatever notice I got to say, you got to re-up, it went, it didn't get it. Right. And uh, and I was, and I didn't have a license. And I was like, when your license expires, at least in California, you have to go through the whole thing again. You have to take the test, everything. Like, you oh. can't just, you had to, you, so, so I was like, God, ugh, I didn't feel like it. Right. <laughs> 
So I got, I went to a place. It was a a motorized scooter, yeah? Yeah, and I said, what can I drive? What am I allowed to drive in here that you don't need a license? And the guy goes, this scooter. I have a question. So I bought the scooter. Was it one of those ones where you see and you're always like, how'd that kid get that? They have like real wheels and it runs on gas. Like, I know you're like, he definitely put that together himself. Or was it like the Razor one that you plug in and... No, it was like a sit down. A sit down? Yeah, it was a sit down, two wheel, like it was like a scooter. Like a real, you know, that one, the first one. Oh, what? Oh, the deluxe that? velocity. Oh, oh, that's like a moped. Yeah, or, or I'm sorry, Pip, go over TAO49, T-A-O that one. That's a moped. It was babe. like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I thought? The scooter is that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was a moped. Scooter is when you stand on Yeah. A moped. So, where is it now? Okay. So I had this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like seven or eight hundred bucks. They're they're way I mean, f- for what it is, it's pretty cheap, you know? Like it's yeah, a goddamn you don't get, vehicle. If you don't get it on the expressway or anything. <clears throat> You're not allowed, yeah. You yeah. it's street legal, but you can't take it on the expressway. It caps at thirty or thirty five miles per hour. So I just picture you racing down the street with a shirt that says street legal on it. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. A helmet. Maybe you got the helmet on and like the, the straws with and the rosés are up here. Yeah. <laughs> Rosés are up on that, like the, <laughs> you're wearing one of those beer helmets with rosés in them, drinking it. So, dude. S- scooter, scoot, scooting is not a crime. I drove that thing for like a month, maybe two months. And then I was talking to somebody. I go, yeah, it's great, dude. You don't even need a driver's license. I was like, I don't even care that I don't have a license anymore. I used to use this thing everywhere. It's charge rechargeable. It's like, you know, and he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, you, you're not allowed to drive those uh, driver's license. So I was like, <laughs> yes, you are. And he goes, no, you're not. No. Look it up. So I did. And it was like, you were absolutely not allowed to operate with this. <laughs> so I went back to the store and I yelled at the guy and he gave me a full refund. After months of using <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I go, dude, uh, I go, dude, do you realize I could literally have gone to jail? You assured me I didn't need a license what for this. What was his response? He was like, well, I don't know about. And I go, no, there's nothing to not know about. Here's what you said, and here's what the law is. And I showed it to him, and he was like, all right, we'll give you, you a refund. You brought the law in? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that was it. I and got he, a refund. He, and then I went and got my license. He gave you a full refund. Full. On a, did you buy it new or used? New. You had it for two months. You were scooting around. It might have only been a month. How long were you scooting around town? How long were you scooting around town? It was at least a full month. A month. And at you least, were using it, it probably the, was more like two months. Nearly daily. Yeah. And I caught a guy stealing it. Twice, <laughs> two Dude, times. I caught a guy, guy stealing it. No, different guy. Oh, oh, you said I. You said I caught a guy stealing it twice. Oh, no, different guy. Yeah. Two times. I caught guys stealing. What's it. up with you and get, your bike got robbed too? It's crazy. They do these, these guys. I would take the battery. You can't out have of nothing it. nice. You can't have a nice scooter. Yeah, and I had it parked on in my private driveway, and a guy walked on, just picked it up. Wheels were locked. Wheels were locked, and he picked because that's like you know an anti theft thing. Picked it up and was like just dragging it, okay, standing wait. up. You heard him out the window. You happened to be pulling up, coming out of the house. How'd you I find? I think him? I just saw him doing it. I think How? I just like out came home to find this guy uh, by okay, chance. Okay, what happened? How did this unfold? Like, wait, what are you doing? Oh, uh, you know, it's a fucking crazy homeless guy, yeah. and he like walks off, and you're like. What am I going to do, fight the guy? I, I was in a store. I was in, shout out to Whalebone. Uh, I was oh, in yeah. the Whalebone store. Uh, Big shout outs. I, on, I believe it's on Bleecker. And so, and I was in there, right? And some guy comes in and he has his <laughs> luggage with him. And he's like, oh, I'm going to take a couple, I'm going to look, take a quick look over here. And he leaves the luggage right outside the, the front door. I didn't hear the guy say that. So then we're, I'm in the store and some guy opens the door and he goes, oh, he goes, he goes, is this anyone, is this your luggage? I was like, no, it's not my luggage. He goes, is that's not your luggage? I go, he goes, no. He goes, okay. He opens the luggage and just starts, he just walks away. He starts crossing the street. All of a sudden, the other guy runs from the back, runs out. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. The guy's halfway across the street, rolling his luggage. He goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? That's mine. He goes to grab it, and the guy won't give it to him. He goes, it's my luggage. Let go. It's my luggage. He, he goes, what the hell are you doing? He yanks out. He goes, what the hell are you doing? It's my luggage. And the guy, I guess he was like, I don't know, home, I don't know if he was homeless or just, and he goes, he, he's in the middle of the intersection. He goes, how was I supposed to know it's your luggage? It's <laughs> a great response. And the guy looked at him like, and then just walked away. And we were like, you know, it's not yours. <laughs> yeah, that's a great response. Yeah, it was great. We were cracking yeah, up. Yeah, that's like a mind trick response. We were like, wait, well, you're not supposed to. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So, but, yeah. so with you, you were just the same. You were like, oh, well, guy, guy, come on. I got you. You weren't just like. No, it's just like, what are you doing? That's not yours. That's my, you know. And then another time, same, same type of thing. The other time, I think the 
my neighbor caught the guy and sent me a picture. I'm like, just so you know, this so the one you returned also had two attempted robberies on yeah. it, plus almost two months of scooting around. Yeah, and the guy must have been scared then. Because for him to be like, here's a full refund on I a new him, scooter that drove, that depreciated. Well, because I said to him, I go, dude, you, I could have gone to, literally gone to jail, and I could have been fined. The fine was like 50 grand yeah, or but something. At that point, it was yeah. your word against his. I'm surprised he's. No, that's why I said I showed him the law. I'm no, like, no, I'm no, showing but he could have been like, I didn't tell him that. It was the owner of the shop. Okay. There, he was there with salespeople. It was a, you know, it's a uh, niche kind of shop. It's uh, not like you're at a dealership. <laughs> I also think you're gifted at getting a refund. I am. I will thank you. I appreciate. I actually appreciate that. I actually, I am pretty gifted at it. I am pretty good at like. I think that's a TV show. You get people their refunds. Oh yeah, well, it's a it's at least a segment on something. It's, it should be a daily show segment. Well, let me let me let me tell you right now. I wrote to Uber the other day. Remember when the guy screwed yeah. me? I wrote to them. I said, "Listen, this is what happened, and if you don't pr appropriately um, refund me, I you could look at my my record with Uber. I've spent I spent a, a ton of money on Uber, tons, right? Yeah, yeah. I said I will I will not I will switch. I will not use your platform right. they wrote back hey we got your message we're so sorry that happened we'd like to offer you a five dollar credit a five dollar credit so then i wrote back i said listen i said i told you that if you didn't respond appropriately you would lose my business i've been i've been by using the way that response is an automated response that's not a human being so it's right so yeah. i said that i go right. yeah i don't even know what this is i said but i told you i said i would like this i would like this escalated to the absolute highest level uh, uh title that you can uh, uh, you know send it to but i'm just just so they know that i'm leaving and i said I, i'm i told you i would switch i'm switching you'll never see my you'll never see it again unless you and then they wrote me back again and just said you have reached just so you know you have reached the highest level of we are you are talking to now to the highest level of person who can talk about this um let us know if we can do anything else for you like not like whatever so i just i mean i I took Lyft today. Yeah, I I, I deleted. Dude, it's wild. I deleted words. Uber, and and I took and I'm now I'm starting to take Lyft. I got into a thing with a guy involving something I'm doing. I'm trying <laughs> to keep it vague. First thing or the second thing? But the guy, you know, word was given. Conf, you know, uh, uh, confirmation was given that something would be a certain way. And it turned out it wasn't. You, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Good. Okay. I don't want anybody to know. It's, but a, it's a little less. So this way, I was I was more or less guaranteed a price on something. Oh, and I then know, the price, know, yeah, the I price came doing. back different. Yeah. And I said on Friday to the guy, the it, dude, it, I I went so hard at the first guy, his boss called me. I went so hard at her, her boss called me. And her boss called me and he goes, I think we got a little misunderstanding here. And I go, I'm going to stop you right there and I'm going to save you a lot of time. And he starts going, Joe, Joe, Joe. And I go, do not talk to me like that. And he goes, then you don't talk to me like that. And I go, no, I do. Because you guys are the ones playing around, not me. So don't waste my time with explanations. I've heard all the explanation. We went through the whole thing. And he goes, well, what? I want to help. What can I do to help? I go, give me the number you assured me I would receive. Right. And he goes, I can't do that. And I go, then I don't understand what your definition of the word help is. And he goes, okay, well, call me if you need anything. Uh, it's unreal. It means nothing. The yeah. word means nothing anymore. Yeah, yeah. We want to accommodate. We want to help. Yeah. We won't do anything to yeah. change any of it. Yeah. But we want to. It's just, God, I hate everything so much. I feel much. like in, in, that, in that capacity, when you're dealing with that, any type of institution or business or organization that is a, either a monopoly or really has you by the nuts... Uh, airlines, whatever. I feel like it's a game should, of life. We should do it. It's Monopoly. It's the game of life. It's, I feel like we should. We should all it's checkers, not chess. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I think that we should all petition and try to get this uh, a bill turned into a law, whatever the hell it's, you do. And whereas, like, we're in as if someone in that capacity gets caught, almost like a little scarlet letter. You get to like tattoo on their yeah, face like something that. like what they did. <laughs> And so then, meanwhile, you know, so if you come see a guy coming out the street, his face is all tatted up. He'll never work in that industry again. Well, there was there was like five seconds. That's reasonable, right? Yeah, but here's the thing: there was like a five second period where that existed, and it existed through online reviews. 
for five seconds, online reviews were just, they were fair, and you... And it's been ruined now because people just use them as weapons now. They've weaponized it. Right. So now we don't even, you could, I could find a restaurant at this point. The rating could be 1.3. I'm still going to roll the dice because right. I'm like, oh, these people might be assholes. Right, Who right. knows? You never know. You know what I mean? Or or vice versa. Something can have a 5.0 perfect rating and I'm still like, I don't know if I trust <laughs> well, it. Well, I, I, I had to learn to just, just take a leap of faith because what I'll do is like at for a hotel or even something on Amazon, I'll be like, all right. 40,000 reviews. It's like, you know, 4.5 stars. And I'll go look like, let me just take a look at the negative reviews. You ever do Real review quick. math? And it's like, the negative review is like, oh, I'm not, that's terrible. I'm not doing this. Do you ever do review math? Meaning, I do this all the time, like especially on Amazon. I'll be like, well, this version of the product has an 85% five star, you know? But they've only got seven thousand votes. This one's got a oh yeah. This one's got a seventy eight. Oh yeah, I'm not, got some 40, new kid on the block. Reviews. Some new kid on the like, block with five stars is yeah. not going nowhere with me. Yeah. I, I need, I need, I need, a, a, I need, I need reviews, man. I need a history. We got a battle, I think. Yeah, what is it? We're continuing the French fry tournament. Now we got winners of the last French fry tournament. We did uh, Curly one, right? Curly versus Curly B. Crinkle. Cr Curly B. Crinkle. And your traditional beet sweet potato. Yeah, blew the balls off of it. So right now, curly and 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 traditional. Head to head. And 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 it's perfect so far because you repped curly and right. I repped traditional. So right. right now we've each got a contender going into the semifinals. Correct. Now you got four other players in the game. Four other players. We got two battles today: steak versus waffle and shoestring versus tater tot. Let's begin with steak versus waffle. And Time to B A T T L E butts. All right. Sal is team steak fry. I am team waffle fry. I want to begin by saying I don't understand why you keep insisting that waffle fries in, pr in our private conversations yeah. when we're alone at night, when it's just you and me and the whole world is shut out. Yeah. Why do you keep insisting that the waffle fries the same as the curly fries? Oh, the reason I it's do not. that, that's the, the reason I do that is because it is. In it's what sense? You, you, I've had a seasoned waffle fry. I've also had a seasoned traditional fry. But, but I've also had unseasoned waffle fries to great lengths, much more than I've had seasoned waffle fries. And I don't understand why you, why you keep saying these, so these the are the same. So the first waffle fry I had that wasn't seasoned was with the place you was it, what was the place you called it? The out? place I called it? Yeah. Chick-fil-A? Yeah. That's waffle? Major North American chain? Is that, that chain? a waffle fry? Yeah, they only but, serve waffle so fries. They don't even give you an option. Can I just say something? And this might be an unpopular opinion. Uh, Chick-fil-A. I don't care about the, you know, they're in the news politics. Let's just talk about the food before we knew anything about anything. I don't give a shit about that. Chick-fil-A. Really, I was very impressed with a chain chicken, grilled chicken sandwich. It was juicy and delicious. I will tell you something right now. I think their fries are not good. They Listen. Are not, they, are, they are just not, they are, I mean, you talk about, you know, I mean, I will, they're not even in the same league as a sandwich. Like the fry is, I is plain and dry and I will un say uninspired. This. I will say this. I've had bad batches of Chick-fil-A fries as I've had bad batches of every place's fries. When it's done right and when they are good, I I've love the Chick-fil-A fry. I get excited. First of all, it's a very Chick-fil-A. Uh, they do take a very, they implement their Christian approach into the menu. You know, How so this is God's law. You'll get a waffle fry and that's it. You, you we're not giving you choices here. <laughs> <laughs> you pray to one God and our God is the waffle the, fry. The, the, I mean, so, I, gotta tell you, uh, I, I don't know how you do something so well. So, and then the other thing, dude, Chick-fil-A, that is such a wonderful treat at Chick-fil-A, getting those waffle fries with that amazing chicken sandwich. I put the fries onto the sandwich sometime and the and the circumference of the fry, the surface area of the fry. It, it works. That's perfectly. Nice. It's a nice stacking fry. That's yeah. good. that's good for that. But I will say, if you if you specified Chick Fil A waffle in this, I, did, I think you would get demolished. I think you. But no, that's just no. Because O'Reilly, you know, we talked last week about you know this the store bought frozen fries that you cook at home are always going to be a lower quality. But but I will say, out of all those store bought freezer aisle fries, the O'Reilly waffle fry is one that often does comes out well. Here's why I like the waffle fry against a curly even. I know it's not badly curly. Again, the surface area of a waffle fry, a waffle fry is designed in a way where it is able to cook 
evenly. I've never had an unevenly cooked waffle fry. Now, I've had waffle fries that were overdone or underdone, but I've never had an uneven evenly cooked waffle fry and even with traditional fries sometimes they're they're it, 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 you you get a weird mixture uh in temperatures the waffle fry is a great treat by the way too and i'll say this and i'll throw to you if you ever get french fry nachos someplace which some places will do them like a loaded not a loaded it, it's it's basically instead of tortilla chips it's fries they use ra- waffle fries nine times out of ten and oh my God, dude, you get a waffle fry with, with some asada and melted cheese and cake. Oh. I mean, you have to, you have to pull me away from it. You have to pull me away from it. It's a food that I need you to keep away from me. So I don't kill myself by eating too much. Of it. Heavens to Betsy. Heavens to Betsy. I, uh, outside of the Chick-fil-A fry, that standard waffle fry, nine times out of 10 in my entire life. If I, I like waffle fries because to me, they're identical to curly fries. They're not identical. But if I had to choose, because they're because t- let's just say the ones I I've seen and ate are identical. It's the but same besides, exact. Even it's the same. Um, it's it's been the same. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, come on, man. But here's Help the seasoning. Seasoning. But, but, but what I'm the saying is seasoning, even if, and it's the same exact uh, batter crust on it. But, exact. But even so if, if the I had to seasoning and batter the two, are the same, I like curly better. But even if the seasoning and battering are the same. The experience is different. It's a different type of fry. You look, you of all people should know that. You argued, not even on the show, and we're going to do shoestring today, but you argued to me shoestring is completely not traditional. Da 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 da. You, shoestrings are seasoned the same way regular are with salt, usually. They're not seasoned. Yeah, yeah, no, so my yeah. point is, is you are very aware that the design of the fry plays into this and that is a huge okay, difference that's a between, good point taken that's a good point uh, taken. so so a waffle fries design alone whether it's seasoned well, or not is a is a really special enjoyable and i like that it's got little holes in it because it gives it gives some air to the experience it doesn't I, there's not a denseness whereas I, your steak fry to me i feel like i'm eating a log of potato okay it's too well, much so yeah so i guess what i was leaning into was Every fry that's not every fry that's seasoned the way a regular fry is is original tasting differently cut right. You have all those covered. So when you said waffle fry, I just thought we checked the box already with curly fry. But your point is is a good point. Here's the thing: why I took today, I'm taking shoestring and I'm taking steak. Okay, because they are at polar opposite ends of the fry spectrum. Right. If you got original traditional dead in the middle, right? Okay. Stick I love, with steak for now because that's the battle. Or sure. Right. Well, right. I'm just saying, like, well, I love shoestring. They no, might, no, no. Stick with steak. But I'm going to tell you why I chose steak. <laughs> so it far to, in this battle, you've talked about curly I'm fries gonna, and now shoestring. I'm going to tell you why I we like We never steak. started the timer, by the way. Shit. Uh, guys, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We love those folks over there. I got to tell you right now, if you're thinking of therapy, if you've never tried it, if you're a vet, I think you give this a try. It's online therapy made convenient and easy just for you. And I got to be honest, I was talking to, who was I talking to? My, my dad yesterday about how I think therapy is, should, would be a good option for him. I'm trying to get him to try it out because it's like going to the gym uh, for your mental state. And I think it's really, really important. And I always feel because of my OCD and my ADHD and my hangups that I get in my own way. I overthink everything. And one of the things that I found really helped me to process those things is therapy because it's dedicated time that I spend to talk about my thoughts out loud. It really kind of clears your mind and clears the air and kind of frees you up when you didn't even know that could happen. So that's the way that I use it. I think if you're thinking of starting therapy, maybe you give BetterHelp a try. Uh, Again, it's flexible and suited to your schedule. You fill out a questionnaire and they match you with a licensed therapist. And that's it. You can switch therapists at any time and there is no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TasteBuds today. You get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TasteBuds. Folks, who loves cereal? We love cereal, especially here at the Taste Buds Podcast. That's why we're proud to have Magic Spoon as one of our sponsors. You know, for the longest time as an adult, I couldn't eat cereal. I could, just wasn't the best idea. And that's why I'm grateful for Magic Spoon coming along and making a uh, cereal experience, a childlike, nostalgic cereal experience accessible to somebody at my age. Why? Because they took out all the bad stuff. Magic Spoon, they've reinvented your favorite childhood cereals to taste great, but each serving contains zero grams of sugar, 
13 to 14 grams of protein and four to five net grams of carbs per serving. Okay, look, it's also keto friendly, it's gluten free, it's uh, grain free, it's soy free. It's free of all the free things it should be free of. Uh, and it's a great way to relieve those moments when you're watching your favorite cartoons. Yes, I still do that. Plus, it's only 140 calories per serving. Uh, they've got a new product, by the way, since we last saw Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon took the magic in their cereal and transformed it to an on-the-go snack. They got a brand new treat. It's called Treat. And you can have totally delicious high-protein cereal bars for breakfast, dessert, or any time in between. Uh, these things are protein packed by the way they're uh, just like the marshmallow treats you had as a kid but with only one gram of sugar uh and one to two grams of net carbs and again they're packed with protein 11 grams per bar my gosh almighty trust treats come in two flavors marshmallow and chocolatey peanut butter magic spoon's awesome anyway head to magicspoon.com slash taste buds to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try the magic for yourself. And don't forget to add their brand new marshmallow and chocolatey peanut butter treats. Be sure to use our promo code TASTEBUDS at checkout to save $5 off your order. And magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of cereal at magicspoon.com slash TASTEBUDS and use the code TASTEBUDS to save five dollars off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Okay, give us a five minute or pimp. I'm gonna tell you why I love in. steak. Okay, because it's the polar opposite of what my favorite is. So it's a different experience to me. We're talking about the cut of the fry, right? Shoestring cut. to me. You ever, you ever eat um those potato sticks? You ever eat potato sticks? Oh yeah, I used to love those as a kid. I felt like I was getting like a. I felt like I was getting adult a food, except and at you, a Seven Eleven. And you were getting a billion. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of potato sticks. As a matter of fact, we should do them in a battle. But for me, the shoestring fry is an extension of potato, about potato sticks. sticks. And what I like is I like getting them super, super crispy and crunchy. And since they're little, but that, save but this let for me the finish. shoestring fry. Uh, I told you that I have a point. You're not all even right, letting me make right. it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just afraid you're going to burn that, your juice on shoestrings now. No, not now. That's right. the element that I love in that. And when I want something different than that, the way for me to go is the exact opposite end of the spectrum. The steak fry essentially is basically like a little basically like baked potato. It's a it's you get a different bite. It's a full on piece of potato in a in a, in a bigger bigger bite. It's it's Nuts. although it's although it's the same salted potato it tastes and eats differently, right? Because it's a big substantial chunk of potato. It tastes differently in your mouth. It chews differently. Let me, it dips differently. Let uh, me tell you what nobody's ever done yeah. ever in the history of fries. Yeah. Finished their steak fry. It's fine. Great. It's too much. So you that's fine. It's but you never too left wanting much. you never left wanting more. There's one time and one time only, and it's not even all the time. Yeah. Because a lot of time in this situation, I prefer the baked potato. But there's one time and one time only I might enjoy a steak fry. And it's if I am at a steakhouse and I go old school surf and turf, piece of steak, piece of lobster, tail on Beautiful the golden thing, crisp steak fries. Right? Some what about a diner? You might no, as well call us never, never, well, never, never. You never, might as well never. call a steak fry a diner fry. No, no, They're no, no. What no, comes no. with the disco fries when you put? No, that's not true. I get traditional fries gravy. usually with with that from, stuff. Well, from where I'm from, a disco fry or a, or a diner fry is a steak fry. And look, I don't. No, uh, no, 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 no. A disco fry is a dressing on the fry. You that that's not that's not true. A disco fry. I mean, I've seen gravy the, fries a million times with with regular. I mean, ninety nine percent of the time, I see them on steak fries in the diner. That's what, disco fries. I mean, yeah. it was brown gravy and whatever, right? So my point, though, is that I don't always love a steak fry, but when I want something different. So basically, take the fry, the regular traditional fry, as your constant. Well, if I want a different fry eating experience than that, then I have to either go one way or the other way. And I think the steak fry checks the box of, well, I'm going to be eating, but I'm going to be eating a fry today, but it's going to be almost like you're really getting <laughs> bites of po actual potato and texture of potato. We're in as a shoestring fry. You're going to be getting a crunch. And, I understand. And if it's not, but even, tell me why a steak fry is not, better than a waffle fry. You still haven't made your point. I've told you why a waffle fry is better than a steak fry. I love fry. everything. I, I love the dimensions, the shape, the weight of it, the bite of it. I like a, I like a nice steak 
big fry. I like I like the surface area because you could spread ketchup on it, almost like you're spreading it on a piece of bread, and yeah. like get it nice and and I and I These like are, I like to take a bite yep. and really just if I'm in that mood, really feel like I'm eating a potato. steak fry. A steak fry is so thick. It's by the way, less fry. Uh, let's like by frying the, and more potato experience. By, by the way, Pimp Googled steak fries. Bon appetit. Steak fries are garbage right out of the gate. Steak, they're going to say, oh, those aren't even, that's even better. Those are steak, those are steak fries with the skin still on them. I think. I love that. Pimp, go back real quick, skin please, to, that, to these pictures. These pictures, by the way, are not accurate pictures of steak fries. Oh. <gasps> Oh no, we can't. I was gonna say truffle fry, but that's a, that's like that's on top. These fries are not steak fries. These are traditional fries. Yeah. Steak fries are, are rectangular usually. They're yeah. flat. Yeah. I look just, when I, I get steak fries I, nine times out of ten. I, want, if I'm getting I a need like, burger, I want a steak fry. When I get a steak fry, I need no way, dude. That's yeah. crazy to me. But I, when I get a steak fry nine times out of ten, I need sour cream with it because I'm like. God damn, man! This just tastes like I'm eating a baked potato every time I eat the fry. Yeah, I mean, no, like I mean, it's like it's too you much. Do. What you do you get a nice? And I like baked potato, nice golden brown. Because what what happens with the steak fry is the outside can have a nice little crisp when you bite it, but the inside is going to be nice and moist and soft. But that was your argument against. I I that was your argument against the crinkle fry. That's what you said you didn't like about the no. Crinkle. I I feel like crinkle fries taste bland and cheap. The ones that the frozen ones I grew up with, I just feel like it's well the frozen somehow ones, yeah. a low quality potato. The, fro the frozen ones, yeah, but but we're you know again we can't I, I we can't hinge oft, it all on the frozen. I don't oft see crinkle outside of the frozen ones, so that's kind of was my experience. But Del Taco has an inc their their only fries are crinkle fries, and they are incredible. I don't consider Nathan's a crinkle fry, do you? I mean, I know it's crinkled, yeah, but it's <laughs> no no no. <laughs> Yes. No, 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 no. But but now but then you're gonna have subsections, right? No, it's have, a crinkle you're gonna fry. You're gonna have a traditional crinkle and a thick cut steak crinkle, basically is what it is. Oh, uh, 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 all know right. What I'm saying? Fair enough. All right, we're all right. Listen, we're at time. Let's get the vote on this. I want to see what we got here. I think a steak fry is the second most classic fry other than a traditional fry. The steak. And I, I think that is true, and I think it's for a reason. All right, the steak fry is the worst thing that ever happened to a potato. That's not true. Steak fries are so dry. Someone shove a potato up their ass. Steak fries are dry and have no flavor. The sauce gets in the crevices of the waffle fry. Great point. I didn't think of that. The answer is waffle fries. Aaron Rodgers eats steak fries, and look how that worked out. <laughs> waffle fries from Chick Fil A, without a doubt. Uh, steak fries are an abomination. <laughs> Where's the potato since the potato famine? <laughs> but right underneath that, the steak fry is elite. Both rock. See, they're, but they're going Chick-fil-A on us. They're attributing the waffle fry to Chick-fil-A fry. They're allowed to do that? By the that? way, I, I'm surprised, guys. The, the waffle fry at Chick-fil-A is not good. So you're, you're, your you're, credibility goes out the window if that's what you think. Dude, I think you I, I think you might be in for a pound thing here, dude. This ain't looking yeah, good. Yeah, this isn't looking good at all. Whoever says steak fries is at least 65 plus years old. Uh, no, knock that down 20 years. <laughs> waffle fries are dry as F, usually crunchy too, or they're crazy soggy. So I'm saying, I'm assuming that's not. I've never one. had a. I steak mean, I said I've been an undercooked. Tater, I've never had a crazy soggy. Steak fry is tater royalty. Too many children voting for this waffle nonsense. Nobody on this planet likes steak fries. It's basically a quartered potato with no crisp. No, my friend, that's a potato wedge, and we didn't go there. Steak fries, simply too much potato. Steak fries are thick daddies. But that's daddies. what you want when you want potato. All right, this guy says they're thick daddies, and we all need a little thickness in our life. Uh, steak fries always taste like a stale potato. Never had a fully cooked steak fry. All right, Pim, take us to, take us to the vote. I I mean, I'm getting demolished. <laughs> I'm going to get the All right, we have 5,000 votes. Come on, where my steak fry people at? Pimpy. All right, 5,200 votes. Pimp voted for steak fry. Thank you. But uh, we took a beating here. Waffle 66%. fry. 66%. 6634. This is the margin, basically two thirds to one third, that I think most of our battles net out at. Buddy? In a general sense. I don't think today's going to get any brighter for you in the yeah. second battle. Shoestring. Because you're putting sh shoestring. shoestring. It's tater Shoestring. What are you nuts? <laughs> shoestring should have went up against something else. Tater tots should have. Should, shoestring, shoestring should have went up against something I, else. Because shoestring are not common, and I don't think people really. Are we in the battle for shoestring now? Let's do it. All right, start the clock, pimp. Starts at eight minutes. Thank you.
Shoestring is the absolute best. If you don't like a steak fry, then you should have shoestring fry shoe tattooed strings, on your neck because it's the exact shoe opposite. Shoestrings are fine, but but I said this to you last week or whenever we talked and texted about this. I'm like, dude, when you fully explained shoestring to me, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. They are not commonly found. They're amazing. Though. People, I don't, I don't Look. know one fast food place that has a shoestring. Not one, which is a, which is a sign of the, these are not commonplace fries. I think they're more difficult to make. I really do. Are they? Yeah. I mean, In and Out sort of does shoestrings, but they're In and Out no, burgers got the worst not, fries that, on planet I mean Earth. Real official shoestring. Yeah, look, buddy, I know the fry. I'm saying, like, these are hard to come by. I will tell you what's a real treat, and I have had it. Look, that right there. Boom. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I have had. You, I have you had. blanched them. Yeah, it's too much to, yeah. Yeah. I have had, courtesy of someplace, I don't remember, shoestring fries done as cheese fries with the yellow whiz. Mm hmm and it was pretty unreal because it was like eating French fry spaghetti. Yeah, dude. Cause you're getting like clumps of these things with the cheese and everything. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. I like I like a shoestring fry. Cause you can bundle them like sticks. Yeah, you can choose what you want. And you really choose, yeah. and really hit it hard. But dude, the tater tot is the I mean, my God, dude. Tater tot's the this tough is, one. This is... It's in an island of its own, and it, people, you know, people love tater tots because they're not always that common, and they are for exactly that. They're different. They're, you talk about a unique version of a fry. That one out of all of them is the one that is the most unique because it's made differently. It's essentially a... It's essentially a. It's it's not a. It's not a French fry. If we're being honest, you almost didn't want to put it in. Lucy. I know you, but, but I you were adamant about putting it in because yeah. I do see it on menus at, in in the same capacity that a fry is used. If for. If I see a tater tot on a menu, you're gonna. I'm, I, I I light up. You're I'm like, are you kidding me? That you guys have tater. Well, tots? that speaks to my point. It's like tater tots. If it's outside of a breakfast food, you don't see it that 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 commonly, and so you're always gonna go for it. There's not anyone that doesn't like a tater tot, and so I'm gonna get my ass handed to me, but. What I submit is that people aren't familiar enough with the shoestring, okay? For me, out of every single cut of fry, even more than curly, shoestring is the most fun to eat. It's the most tasty. I, I just, I like my fries I extra just don't know where you're browned. getting shoestring fries. Like, where are you getting them? I mean, I've I had them my can, whole life. I don't know where I I know, I but them. I'm saying, like, outside of buying... Now, we keep going back to how frozen freezer aisle is not ever the best option for fries because you don't have a deep fryer at home most people don't my point is is outside of that orida section I, where the hell are you finding shoestring fries I'm, i don't see them anywhere well, i mean but that's not really part that doesn't really speak to the battle no I mean, it I'm, does I'm in the fact asking, that people aren't going to order them and i'm, gonna I'm asking you in this not in the sense of that's a strike against it i'm asking you because you love these things so much where the hell are you eating them this frequently? I will tell you, you know what I notice about the shoestring fry as well? But, no, I'm asking. I, I don't know. I have them when they're around. You, you know, got I, it. There's got to be. But okay. I love them because I love an extra crispy fry. I also like to eat. You can eat 15 cris uh, shoestring fries and it's the equivalent of one steak. You know, you're getting you're getting the, the bite at least over and over and over. But you're not killing yourself with it. You know what I mean? I like that they're light. They don't get soggy. I, I just, I just, I just love them. I just like, I just love the way they bite. I love, I like that I can put in a fistful or just one. I, I just, I just think so, they want, when you dip them, they don't take on too much condiment because they don't have enough surface area to keep them on there. Here's another thing I think about. The I would disagree fry. with that. I, that I would disagree with, which I actually would say is a pro and also a con of the shoestring. I think when you dip them. They become drenched in condiment because they're so thin. Um, no, but they got that snap to but it. But then, but then, but that's sometimes what I like about a shoestring, and sometimes what I don't like. I like my shoestring to be halfway between a French fry and a potato stick. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, here's what I like about shoestring fries as well. They're never like on the menu when you have an option like fries, steak cut, you know, sweet potato. It never says shoestring. But it's it's because it's considered traditional in a way. So just like when it doesn't say like, you know, you're getting a steak cut. A lot of times a place I won't know they're doing shoestring until the plate is dropped. And I look down and I go, oh, my God, 
they do shoestring. <laughs> like I didn't even, I didn't have the option. It comes as a surprise. They chose that as a business. And when it hits my plate, I'm just like, are you kidding me? The shoestring fries. So I'll always finish my shoestring fries. Okay. But I will say tater tot. I don't like overcooked. I won't always finish when my tater tots. When I've had shoestring, I don't like when they're too crunchy. I don't oh, like that. I love that. I don't like that. Here's what but you can't I, but, get but, out but, of a tater tot. But let me say this no such thing as Wait, a let me make No it. such thing as a very, very, very crunchy tater tot. Bullshit. No, no, no. <laughs> that's the, crazy, The outer layer Sal. has a little snap to it, but that's the whole point of a tater tot. It's not going to crunch It's crispy totally on the outside. You, just, it's argue, argue, you just argue that steak fries are like eating a whole goddamn potato. Yeah. What, what is a tater tot then? Tater it's even are, more dense than a steak fry. No, no, it's not. The circumference of a no, tater tot. No, it's not. I can tell you why it's not. Tater tots are hash browns. They're, they're, it's, it's, you have to first create what goes in the middle. Sure. And then put it together and deep fry. Sure. It's a hash brown. It's crispy brown outside, crumbly, flaky potato in the middle. Tater tots. And this is my gauntlet throw. This is my, how are we doing on time for this battle? This is my gauntlet throw for tater tots. Where are we all together? Okay, okay. Sure. this is my gauntlet throw for tater tots. Tater tot is, and I stand by this, They're the fun to throw. only thing in this battle, out of all the fries we have battled so far, the it is the only one where I do not need a condiment ever. I think tater tots going into ketchup ruins the tater tot. I think it's a weird clash. It doesn't taste good to me. Tater tot is it stands on its own, and you to eat strike against tater tots. You don't like tater tot also are the only uh, f uh, fry uh, 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 version of fry in this battle that I think can serve as its own meal if you wanted it to. If you needed to eat, if somebody said you got to eat just potatoes no, for your steak, meal today, steak fries, or disco fries, or curly fries, can no, do that. no, I would bag of tater tots. I'm here's out the, the thing door. about here's the thing about tater tots. Yeah. Okay, at the end of the day. You pick that up, it's got some weight to it, right? They're like these little friggin' nuggets, right? I'd say 30% or more of that weight, that heft in your hand is oil. Those things absorb oil. Now, the exact opposite of a shoestring fry. The shoestring fry can only absorb so much oil. That's it. It's done. It's crisp. It's cooked. It's done. It's never going to be soggy. That's the whole point of a shoestring fry. With with tater tots, even if you put, take them out and put them on a napkin or put them in your hand, you eat that thing, you look at your hand, there's grease all over your hand. That grease is kind of running through that tater tot, and that's why I can't finish a whole basket of tater tots. It's just, it's too heavy. It's too weighted. It gives you, it can give you like literally like a stomach. Well, maybe you shouldn't eat a whole load basket of anything. Grease. Well, the, the serving. Nobody says you have to eat not, a whole basket. The, the little, little tray thing, those little paper trays that they serve it in. No, dude, you're that. That's you don't agree with me though that, that no. there could be a lot of oil, oil and grease inside of a tater tot. There could be a whole lot of oil and grease in any version of a French fry. Where the French a deep tater fry. tot though is is more than no. any other. Name the fry that is no. more prone to holding in oil than a tater tot. I don't. I, I can't. I find quite none. the opposite. I find often when I get tater tots, it is a very dry uh, thing on the outside. There's not a lot of oil. I I know what you mean. But no, usually my experience is not that. Usually my experience with tater tot is that shell on the outside really protects the inside. You, 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 you eat the first four or five taters on top. Once you get past that top layer of tater tots, that nucleus in the middle, they're all congealing. No, they get, that's they're not squishing true. together. There's that's oil in there. True. Yeah, and then that's they're all true. soggy to that. That's you're not eating true. little you're, oil You're bowls. saying that about dude, your shoestrings turn into a, a basket of worms, dude. What are we talking about? No, they here? don't. The shoestrings stay crisp. That's my whole point. If they're overdone, I could take a shoestring and go like this and slice a tater tot in half. <laughs> <laughs> because I can, I could use a shoestring as a sword because it's firm and it's stiff, and a tater tot is just a mushy, mushy blubber held right, together. Well, look, let's go to the. They look like little Donkey Kong it, barrels. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Time's up. Shoestring fries with cheese dipping sauce will change your life. I agree. Calling a tater tot a fry is like calling ketchup a vegetable. Ooh. Tater tots are not considered French fries in the slightest, but then again, shoestring fries are gross as hell. Tater tots. Sonic's tater tots with cheese. Are shoestring fries McDonald's fries? Shoestring fries are flavorless, limp dick skinny fries. <laughs> they get cold. They're ASAP. not limp. That's the whole point, though. You could have said they're flavorless, rock hard skinny fries. <laughs> I pick tater tots over shoestring. Shoestring remind me of leather. By the way, I never said this. The name is the worst name of all fries. Shoestring. Oh, I think it's fun. Oh, God. Yeah, I want to think of shoelaces when I'm eating. Uh, well, I can't make think a of cat. Tots? I can't you make. You want to think of children? No, that's not what Tater that's. tots? How dare you? 
I w- uh, uh, yeah, children of the future. I want to think of the future when I'm eating my lunch. When you eat, you're eating children. Oh, uh, that's not what I said. You can make a casserole out of. You can't make a casserole out of shoestring fries. I thought shoestring was only on my shoe. No, it's also on fries, Molly. Oh, let me go ahead and grab four <laughs> shoestring fries at once because it's the equivalent of one regular French fry. Yes, that's the fun. hell out of here with that noise. <laughs> that's so silly. That's one of the bonuses of it. I love that. Uh, I'm convinced people on only page. claim to like tots because of Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, hmm. that's interesting. It's hard to mess up a tot. Uh, shoestring fries are only good when they're hot. I feel like my... Uh, Tater tots have the ability of being their own dish. Thank you. See? Mm. All right, Pimp, let's go to the vote. What do we got? What do we got? got what do we got? Six, what do we got? 6,000 votes here. Pimpy's going to go with tots. Oh, I thought I was going to lose bigger than that. I thought I was going to lose. It's, it's nearly, it's literally nearly the same exact uh, spread, guys. Drum roll here for the Humble Pie segment. You got Tater Tots after 6,029 votes winning. With 63.2% to a shoestrings 36.8. I'll tell you what I think happened here. I think the wrong thing battled the wrong thing today. I think shoestring would have went further if it wasn't against the tot. I think the tot is going to find itself in the finale, possibly against the curly fry. Well, our semifinals now are the curly fry. Yeah. The traditional fry. Yes. The tater tot. Yes. And the waffle fry. Yeah. Problem is, three of those are my wins. So you're now going to have to battle for something that you fought against previously. Yeah, yeah. So we'll figure that out. Mm. We'll be back, I guess, probably just the next, not next week, but the week after. Next week will be a guest again. The week after that, we'll, we'll do we'll, the... Yeah, we'll wrap it. We'll, 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 well, we'll do the semifinal and then maybe the final together. I don't well, know. We'll so figure it yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, guys. I still love you, buddy. Love you too, babe. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the